morning, everyone. How are you doing? This is Amanda. Today is August the 30th, and I'm going to be reading on the supermoon, which may very well be occurring right as you watch this video, or you might be waiting for it tomorrow, as I am in my part of the world. Uh, before we get to the main um, reason for coming on today, I wanted to say something about the hurricane that is bearing down on Florida pretty much as I speak and as I record this. Um, and it's a little bit of an uncomfortable thing to say, but I am feeling it very strongly, so I am going to say it. Um, this particular hurricane, Idalia, feels manipulated and it feels as though it has been targeted at this particular state. Yes, I am very well aware that Florida has hurricanes, has storms. This is not an unusual occurrence, but I'm feeling as though the energy associated with this particular hurricane is different. And I keep being shown in my mind's eye Ron DeSantis. Now, I know he's a divisive figure. I know some of you can't stand him. I know some of you love him. I am not bringing forth an opinion in this video about him as a person, but I am feeling as though this storm is going to show him in a particular light. He either rises to meet the challenge and that will help his campaign or the opposite will happen. In addition to that, I'm feeling as though if you believe, let's put it this way, if you believe that storms can be manipulated, weather control is something that is a reality and has been a reality for uh, many decades, actually. It's just that more people are talking about it now, weather modification. Um, it feels as though this state and this particular governor is being targeted at this time for reasons that you might wish to guess at, um, but that is what I'm being shown. So with that being said, before we get to the main purpose of this video, which is going to be a general collective energy reading for you, I would like just to send some prayers to the state of Florida, send prayers to the governor there that he can lead the people well in this moment of crisis. And I'm going to pull a couple of cards. And I think the way to do it is to ask what is the energy of this particular hurricane. So Hurricane Idalia, what is the energy? What is the energy behind this storm? Okay, what is the energy behind this storm? Can I have three cards, please, as to the energy behind this storm? We have, have the energy of destitution, five of pentacles, We've got the card of Four of Swords on the bottom of the deck, which is the card of rest. The energy behind the storm wanting to bring a sense of destitution. We have Judgment and Hierophant. It's exactly what I just said. You can refuse to um, accept that message. You can think I'm totally bonkers and off my head but I'm still going to say it. We have judgment on the leader and the judgment is to bring destitution to the state, to him, to keep him out of power. Remember in a traditional tarot deck, the five of pentacles is the person who is locked outside the main place where the abundance is, where the power is. Um, so it feels as though somebody has been working very hard behind the scenes, appearing to be quite graceful and 
peaceful, but beneath the surface has been paddling like crazy to take this guy out of the equation. And unfortunately, in the process, also taking down others. It's as though I can't separate the storm and Ron from what I'm picking up. Now, some people would say he's brought this on himself because of his policies. This is a storm coming in to sweep away that energy. You can take that view if you wish to, but that isn't what I was picking up. This feels as though it's more of an external force that's trying to take the leader out. Also is hoping that the leader will be judged um, badly because of the people that are left outside who have nowhere to go um, and they're hoping that he's going to be found wanting. Having said that though, we have the Queen of Discs on the bottom of the deck, which is the card of Nurture, and I feel as though it might, it's going to help rally him. He's going to be shown in a good light. I think he, whatever you think about him, in terms of his state, his people, the ones that elect him, he does actually care about those that do that. Um, so we have the energy of nurturing, and it's with the, the emperor. This would be him and his wife. And, you know, I think I'm going to make a decision at this point to turn the comments off on this video because... I just know that it's going to create a load of um, bitterness and judgment in the comments. And quite frankly, there's enough to contend with with the storm. <laughs> so that's the message that I want to pass on to Florida today. Um, anything else to say with regards to Florida and the people that are there? Anything else to say? We have Instigation, the Prince of Wands. That's a passionate, young, youthful card. Um, it feels as though it's people coming together to help each other carry the light, carry the, the torch. Okay, so that being said, that was seven minutes. Uh, now let's get into the main body of this video. So, um, blue supermoon in Pisces and happening right now. So it's called a supermoon. I'm sure most of you know this. It's called a supermoon when there are two full moons in a month. Two full moons in a month makes the second one a blue super, make a blue supermoon. And I've been picking up the energy of this for a few days it feels very deep, very reflective, um, introspective energy. Pisces, a water sign, the two fish. It's as though we are being asked to really go there within ourself. It's probably no coincidence that I am the next video after this, although not necessarily filmed today, I'll probably film it tomorrow, which will be the supermoon where I live. I'm going to be doing this video. If I just pan the camera around, I've got it all set up to do a uh, Michael Jackson channeling. And it's going to be themed the man in the mirror. The man in the mirror. No escaping the man in the mirror, which is you. No escaping your reflection no escaping the stories that are still unravelling or um, that haven't been healed, the stories that you need to let go of, etc. I'd like to discuss a couple of things that have been coming up for me. I suspect I'm probably not the only one, and it feels very much linked into this very watery energy. I'd also like to tell you about a dream that I had recently, which again feels linked to the, the this moon. Let's start with the dream, actually. So the dream, 
um, was a couple of nights ago and I was aware that I was standing on the edge of a cliff. Okay, so this is obviously symbolic, not literal. Uh, it reminded me of this particular poem, which I've read many times to you, and I'm sure you know, by Guillaume Apollinaire. Apologies for the pronunciation. And it's this. It's come to the edge, he said. We can't, we're afraid. They responded. Come to the edge, he said. We can't, we will fall, they responded. Come to the edge, he said. And so they came and he pushed them and they flew. Many of you know that poem. The dream felt as though it was linked to that energy. We're at times where all of us are being asked to take a leap of faith. Talked about this many times. So in the dream, I'm standing beside this cliff and knowing that I need to jump symbolically. Uh, there is somebody in front of me who does it without any problem whatsoever. They jump, they don't crash and burn, <laughs> they, they fly effectively, okay? They fly to wherever they're meant to go, they're in free fall, but it's beautiful, all the rest of it. Uh, no hesitation, they just do it. I am standing on the edge of the cliff, dithering, not feeling fear, basically, not feeling as though I can. But I'm aware that other people are watching me, wanting me to be able to do it. One of the people that is watching me is my own higher self or an aspect of my own higher self. After quite some time, I think I'm just going to have to go for it. So I remember two things about it. Number one, in the moment that I realise I'm going to have to go for it, there is then no hesitation and I just go for it. But equally, number one, I don't look down. I don't look down. <laughs> and the other thing I become aware of is that I'm holding a particular crystal in my hand. I'm actually holding this crystal, not necessarily this one, but this crystal, which is Peter Sight. Peter Sight. I also have it as a pendant. So it can look darker, it can look paler. But Peter Sight is the crystal that I'm holding. And that feels very important. Uh, I also feel as though it could have been, there's another crystal there that is black in colour. Might be jet, could be, uh, it's a protective crystal anyway with the Peter Sight. So I jump with the Peter Sight in my hand. And then I'm very aware of an umbrella that basically, it's like Mary Poppins, basically. The umbrella comes up and I float down to the ground like Mary Poppins. <laughs> I don't know if this is Michael's uh, influence as well that was building in my energy field. So I thought I would look up the meaning of Peter Sight because it feels as though it's been given to all of us who are trying to be brave, who are trying to go for it, who have some fear, which is a normal human emotion. What's really interesting, I'm just looking at this book, which is the Crystal Bible by Cassandra Eason. And it says this about Peter Sight, which is particularly relevant if you find yourself in the middle of a storm. I'm literally recording this in the middle of a storm, even though it's not in my part of the world, it's happening on the other side. Some of you are going through it right now. And if you're not going through a storm now, there may well be another one to come at some point. So it says uh, Peter Sight is protective uh, when driving in bad weather conditions. It calms nervous people and animals during storms. It guards homes and businesses against storm damage. It acts as a shield against the adverse effects of technology weather and technology you could put together or you could just think about it in terms of technology such as televisions, computers, phones. So it acts as a shield against the adverse effects of technology, particularly if you work long hours with a computer or live near a mobile phone mast. Peter Sight 
boost self-esteem of creative people who lack confidence in their abilities and so, do, and so do not earn money from their gifts. It gives confidence if worn constantly for several weeks. So I think that's really interesting. So I'm definitely giving you Peter Sight as a transmission. Um, you could have a look for it. In terms of the chakras, it's said to stimulate the, stimulate the third eye and the crown chakra in particular. Um, it says it's also very good for people who have tried and failed many times to beat an addiction uh, by strengthening your willpower to stick to a program. So that's another way. If you think about jumping off the proverbial cliff, this can also be the leap of faith that I can do it. I can do it linked into many different things. OK, so, yeah, that's the dream that I had. Um, one of the things it says in there is imposter syndrome. And this is something that I feel is coming up big time with this supermoon. Uh, it's highlighting all of our delusions, illusions, fantasies. But equally, the biggest delusion that we can live by is the fact that actually we are not the powerful sovereign beings that we actually are that we can't do it, that we're going to fail, that we're going to land with a bump, with a scratch, that we're not going to be able to recover, we're not going to be able to get back up on our feet. So imposter syndrome, is that something that you have been feeling coming in? I think it's probably a very natural thing to feel, particularly if you think about the next level that is coming up for all of us. Whatever that means for you, it's going to mean something different for everybody. The next level always requires us to stand tall and strong in our God-given gifts, in our sovereignty. And it's normal for maybe, for example, the wounded inner child or a fragmented part of self to think, I'm not sure I can do that. So if you're feeling that, have love and compassion for that hurt or broken or doubting part of yourself. Know, it's part, know it is part of the journey, but we mustn't be dictated by it. We must turn more to our higher self, which encourages us to do it. And in my dream, the higher self is actually in the crowd watching, cheering on me who's trying to do whatever it means to get to the next level. But it's a dream that feels appropriate for all of us. Let's pull a couple of cards on imposter syndrome. So, I mean, in some ways, I don't even have to really uh, shuffle the deck. This is on the bottom of the deck, I've just noticed. This is dark thoughts. Uh, dark thoughts as opposed to positive thoughts in terms of I can. I can, I will, I conquer, I am capable, all of that. This is the complete opposite, okay? And it's interesting because there's this storm that's breaking overhead in the card. And the storm is bringing with it this, I'm not talking Idalia here, I'm just talking generally, the storms that come into our life that shake things up, that move us on, that enforce change a lot of the times. And I do feel as though this supermoon is going to be a hard bringer of change, but it's an enforcer of change as well. It's long wanted change in our life that we might have wanted to dodge or avoid, but it's here. So don't go into this maze, which is all the different compartments of your mind in terms of, I can't do it. I can't, I'm not good enough. Some of the greatest people with the greatest talents uh, have that energy of, I can't. I, and I've, I've said this before, haven't I? But is it Sir John Gielgud, somebody like that, one of the best actors that ever graced the stage, always talked about the fact that before he went on stage, he was physically sick because of just the nerves. And he couldn't, couldn't just didn't think he was going to be able to do it. Went on, gave the performance of his life every single night whether it was him or anybody else, it's a good story, okay? And it's a true story. Many people feel like that. So I'm just wanting to say love the nerves as well. 
But again, going back to Peter's side, this is a, a crystal that can help to calm the nerves. In terms of the sprays that we sell um, and that we make, in terms of calming the nerves, in terms of a colour, I would choose two colours. I would choose yellow or I would choose blue. So blue by nature is very soothing. It brings a calmness. Um, and the natural one to probably choose there, which I don't have to hand, I don't think, would be sapphire piece. OK, so sapphire piece would be a beautiful one just to soften everything down. Um, but equally, any of the uh, yellow sprays as well, golden citrine maybe linked into the solar plexus, just helping to calm anxiety, calm it all down. In fact, let's just spray a little bit of the golden citrine. Let me grab that. It's just here. She said sliding out of what view. <laughs> okay, golden citrine. So let's just bring a bit of this in to the session. Golden citrine goes straight to the solar plexus, your power center, reminding you that you can do it that you can take that leap of faith, that whatever change is knocking at the door, you are going to be able to meet it and answer it from a place of power. OK, so really just breathe in that golden light right down into the solar plexus energy. Um, OK, isn't that interesting? I just shuffled the cards again. You didn't see it, it was off camera. But again, this is the card on the bottom of the deck. Is the card of fear. I mean, this is, that is the passage I've just read, isn't it? Let me reread it to you. Come to the edge, he said. We can't, we're afraid, they responded. Come to the edge, he said. We can't, we will fall, they responded. Come to the edge, he said. And so they came and he pushed them and they flew. The other spray that would be very good is, of course, the Fear Fighter spray. This is actually one of our children's sprays, but it's often the child within you that is actually the frightened little soul. You know, it's the, the part of self that is frightened. And um, the depiction on this spray shows somebody just firing a bow and arrow, firing um, an arrow of light into the future future self, but equally piercing the present moment, which feels as though I can't do it. You can and you will. OK, so remember, this is all coming in the, on the back of this super moon energy. So put a bow and arrow, an arrow of light and fire through your fears. Um, and definitely if something like imp um, imposter syndrome is coming up, um, Let's have no more of that. OK, uh, what else? Uh, oh, this is another interesting energy that I've been feeling recently. And I, I don't think it's just me. Please tell me if it is. I don't think it is. It's not going to apply to all of you. And I think this is actually something that happens when it's a vibrational thing. Maybe it's something we have to experience before we really wish to embrace more of a unity energy. Um, it's the outsider, the spiritual outsider, the spiritual outsider. Um, I have, it's been a long summer, even though it hasn't been much of a summer here, but you know, I've been enjoying lots of people's photographs of, I don't know, things that they've been on in terms of whether it's a retreat, a workshop, gatherings of souls, it's a beautiful thing. Absolutely, it's a beautiful thing. And of course, social media, um, you see it all in you know, technicolour glory. Uh, there it is, everybody looking so happy, everybody looking so unified, you know. But there's a part of me that's feeling outside of that. Now, is this from wounding? Probably, yes. But I'm still wanting to talk about it because I don't think I'm the only one that's feeling it. What is this all about, this spiritual outsider? Is it just nature of the beast sometimes that if you're following a bit more of a maverick path, you don't feel the need so much to meet in big groups? 
is it is it something about just being comfortable in your own skin, not needing other company? But yet in unity consciousness, we need to sort of be with others. Is it a past life remembrance of being locked away in caves? You know, I, I know I've got a strong Essene energy, uh, a past life energy, where it was about being secluded. You weren't out there. You weren't showing yourself so much. Uh, certainly in large groups, it wasn't safe. So you were hidden away a bit. So is this something that needs to be cleansed and got, got away from? Probably it is. But equally, I hate the word should, that we should be doing it. We should be there. Because really, could is a much better word. We could be there if we wanted to. But it's about asking ourselves, why do we feel like the spiritual outsider? What is that all about? So should I pull a few cards on that? Let's just see what we get. So I'm going to go back to this deck, which is the Quantum Oracle. Wouldn't be surprised if the same cards come out, but let's just see. <laughs> so the Spiritual Outsider, uh, Metatron, I'm just pulling Metatron in in particular. Although I've got Jesus there above my head as well. Um, both of them. Spiritual Outsider. We've got your higher self. Um, You see, she looked, oh, God, sorry, throwing her on the floor. She, well, she, she looks pretty content. She or he is you, is me. Um, do you need much more when you've really got in touch with your higher self? Um, I'm just going to ask that as a question. I think we're living in an age, particularly with social media, and I'm very happy to be on social media. I'm very grateful that you're watching me on social media. But it's just about getting the balance right, isn't it? Um, they say that you show your best self on social media. So sometimes these photographs that you're looking at, the gatherings, which look so perfect, scratch the surface. <laughs> and actually, sometimes all is not maybe what it seems. I don't want to sound cynical, but it's the truth. So we've got the higher self. What goes with the higher self? So spiritual outsider, Metatron, help me out here. Because he's saying there's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with being different. We've got the vast universe and we've got commitment. Commitment, signing a contract to travel your own path. This card here feels as though it's just about traveling your own path in this great universe. Um, I'm feeling as though I want to say, and please, I don't want this to come across that I'm knocking anybody. Um, it's wonderful if you have gatherings where you really enjoy it and you are together with kindred spirits, okay? True soul tribe is a beautiful thing to experience. But I think sometimes there can be a danger that we're congregating in groups around a particular subject, but it isn't necessarily always soul tribe that's there. Um... I don't know. I'm just feeling I have to be true to myself. And what I've been feeling and maybe you've been feeling is it's about walking your own path. And that is the commitment I made. That is the contract that I made. And if you watch me, I suspect there will be a bit of resonance with what I'm saying here because like attracts like. So maybe there is a bit of we're a bit lonely wolf type energy. Maybe there is that um, because this person here that represents us looks pretty content, not really needing lots of other people. <laughs> you see, there's a difference between alone and lonely. This isn't about looking onto it and feeling lonesome and like, oh, no, it's to do with scratching your head and thinking, why don't I want to be there? Why is there something wrong with me? Why don't I want to be there? And it's like, there's nothing wrong with you. There's absolutely nothing wrong with you. You're forging your own path. So anyway, I've laboured that point. But for those that resonate with that second uh, energy that's been coming up for me recently, anyway, uh, there it is. So we've talked about imposter syndrome. We've talked about the spiritual outsider. Maybe also we've just had to be the spiritual outsider in so many lifetimes that it's just become the norm. It's become the norm to sort of be... Um, on our own to a degree. You know, it's not necessarily a bad thing. 
you just have to have compassion and patience for where you are and you can't force anything. Having said that, <laughs> on the bottom of the deck, we have got new supportive connections. So always be um, open to genuine new supportive connections that want to come in. And I think these really genuine, authentic connections, I think they're rarer than sometimes is made out. Maybe it's a byproduct of spiritual, a newly, newly awakening, spiritual awakening souls who just gravitate to the first person who's maybe wearing a crystal necklace. It's like, oh, you're my tribe. You know, you like this, so you must be like me. And it's like, no, not necessarily at all. We're all very individual. Um, we're all very unique. So finding somebody that actually really gets you. I really get what you're saying. I really understand. And you get me and I get you. This doesn't have to be romantic. This is In this sense, it's creative. It's quite rare. Okay, it's quite rare. It can come into business as well people that you link up with, that you work with. Don't just gravitate to the first person who feels as though they can give you what you need. You know, for example, an artist or a musician or be a bit more savvy, okay? Anyway, don't know where all that came from, but there it is. How are we doing for time? 31 minutes and 31 seconds, as I said that. And 31 is linked in colour mirrors to the energy of the hermit. And uh, I haven't got it to hand, but it's an emerald green bottle. Um, our emerald green would be a substitute for it. Let me just grab that. Um, and it's to do with, you see, the, the, the hermit, it's about, it's okay to have boundaries. It's okay to enforce those boundaries. It's okay to be the hermit. It's okay to be the hermit. We're living in this world where it's like, you can't, oh, what do you, what do you mean you want, you want to be on your own? You want to be inside. You, you, why aren't you joining us? Why aren't you, you maybe, maybe you, maybe I am a hermit. <laughs> I am a Cancerian grub. Maybe you are, if you're resonating with this message. Let's stop trying to morph into things that we aren't necessarily. But equally, if you are somebody that just loves being at every single event and all of that, well, that's fine as well. That's absolutely fine as well. OK, live and let live. OK, right. Let's pull a couple of cards. Um, let's go to the tarot and I'm going to pull um, cards on this supermoon. So let me just reshuffle them again. Actually, I'm being told that I need a card from my Christ deck. So let's do that first. OK. Oh, by the way, we're going to be selling these sweet little bags soon to put the cards in. Thank you so much for having patience, guys. I know it's um, really frustrating. Some people still not being able to get the deck. The uh, I'm about to get quite a lot of decks, but I'm having to reserve some because I'm going to be in Birmingham in November for the Mind Body Spirit Fair. I'm there for three days, I think it is, with the team. We've got a stand, so we're going to be there with the sprays, we're going to be there with the cards, and I'm just going to be doing my own thing. I'm just going to be chatting to people that want to chat to me, um, having a cup of tea with you, whatever, you know. Uh, it's But yes, so I need to keep some of the decks for that. But basically, there are more decks about to hit, uh, my my website uh, and also Amazon, who I know are waiting for the same supply. And then they'll probably sell out again and then they'll have to do another reprint. But you see, this is this is the way I do things. I, I've chosen to be with a publisher who uh, have the same ethos, the same, they just get me and I get them and there's no pressure if I do my next Oracle deck in three years, they're not going to be knocking on the door next month saying, where is it? You know, all of that. I I like, it, it's, it's, it's a supportive connection. So I could have chosen a bigger publisher and the cards would be everywhere. 
But I'm sorry, that comes with a price. Uh, I'm not talking a financial price, so I just decided not to do that. But anyway, I'm deviating, guys. I really wanted to show you my bag. Look at this. We've had these made. Uh, they're not in the shop yet. You'll only be able to get these off my website, but they're great because obviously um, they're just an easier way to keep the cards when they're on your desk. Okay, let's have a look. So Super Blue Moon. I mean, this one in the back is pretty good, isn't it? Sorry, I can't get my, I'm very, I'm not dyslexic, but I'm, I'm it's like aerobics. I was always the one at the back that could never follow instructions. Um, that painting with the moon, <laughs> that's actually the depiction of God's garden. Um, isn't it beautiful? We'll see whether we get that card or not. But anyway, I want to bring that energy into it. The child sitting alone, having a moment, healing, respite. Uh, at one with nature, all of that. Anyway, for the people watching then, please, uh, Jesus, just come in. For the people watching, what is the main message that I need to be delivering? We've got the energy of children and it says cherish and enter their world. Cherish and enter their world. I sort of was, wasn't I, when I was just talking about that painting. Um, it's we learn so much by becoming more childlike, uh, innocent, purity, the simple things, you know, swimming in the sea. Um, I don't know if it was Michael Jackson. It's like the playing, uh, what do you used to do? The water balloon things, water balloons. Uh, I'm seeing the things where, you know, they blow bubbles and simple, simple things. So I don't know about you, but this world is becoming more and more extreme, as we all know. There are so many ghastly things happening on a day-to-day -day basis. It can be very hard to keep our equilibrium, um, keep our sanity, but we need to do that. So remembering to honour our child within, but equally to cherish the children as well and to witness their joy and um, their playfulness as well. So we also have the card of humbleness on the bottom of the deck. Uh, this is Jesus washing the feet of Mary Magdalene. And, you know, it's about being of humble service, being of humble service, not putting yourself above another, um, seeing all as equal, but that energy of humbleness and purity and children coming in with this super moon. Okay, now let's do the tarot. I don't want to make this video too long because I want to get it up, but uh, we've got the energy of celebration just flew out of the deck as I picked it up, the four of wands. So something to celebrate coming in. <sighs> Crikey. But we've also got the three of swords on the bottom of the deck, sorrow. Yeah, I was picking this up earlier. This feels a very, very dualistic energy, this supermoon. Um, put it this way, really try to watch your thoughts, watch your train of thought. Keep it as positive and high vibrational as you can. I know if, you know, you're having a moment where you're feeling down or very difficult situations in your life, that can be very difficult to do. But this moon is going to amplify everything. So if you're just feeling, if you don't go on that spiral, that where's that card of dark thoughts? Don't go into that maze. Don't go into that maze because if you go into that maze, um, you're going to feel very trapped, very, very trapped. Um, just see if I can find it again. I'll put it back into the deck. But it was the one I showed you earlier anyway. Uh, I've just noticed another card. Yeah, this one. Don't go there. Don't go there. That's going to really trap you. Um, instead, we need to be like this. This is the card of courage. OK, this is like the Joan of Arc energy. We need to be like Joan. <laughs> we need to be like Archangel Michael. We need to be um, able to go into uh, go into our fears. It's, it's what I've said earlier on in this video. So we've got the card of courage. Um, just see what that was. Somebody just texted me. It's just my daughter, but she's fine. She's all right. Okay. Um, 
So I was saying very dualistic energy. So try to also, if things are ending for you at this time, which they very, very well may be because change is in the air. Change doesn't come without some type of endings. Um, again, acknowledge the feelings that arise, but try not to try not to stay in this energy. This feels like this is defeat. This is defeat. Whereas the energy of the roses, which are suddenly making themselves known, is saying, remember, there is always this. There is always this beauty in our world. There is always cause for celebration. So sorrow and celebration. I also feel as though with the moon, um, conceptions, you know, um, conceptions, babies being born, um, it's a strange thing, and I'm sure many of you have seen this in your own families, that often when a baby is born, there's somebody in the family that often passes. It can be a very bittersweet moment. Um, happened with both of my girls. It's very, very common. And it's the cycle of life. It's as though the family line, there is, there's often an ending, but then there's a celebration, there's a new beginning. So that's not going to be for everybody. And it doesn't mean it has to happen, but it can do. Um, sorrow and celebration. Let me just have a clarification, please, on sorrow and celebration. Hold on, let's just put those two cards back in the deck. Clarification card. Why have we got celebration and sorrow together? We've got patience and we've got perseverance. Um, this is almost a... OK, I'm going to split out. the. There's two different messages. If you're in a place of sorrow, have patience with yourself that things will eventually um, come back around, that the sun comes back out, basically. Uh, life is full of the storms and the rain sometimes. Um, but the sun comes back out in our life. Life is made up of bittersweet. It's bittersweet. So you'll be able to get to this place of balance and equilibrium again after this period of heartbreak. But what's going to get you through it is the energy of perseverance. Also on this deck, which I felt very cool to use today, we've got all of the chakra colours. So make sure that your chakras are fully aligned, that you're doing chakra work regularly. Um, and however you balance them, there's many different ways. I've got meditations up on this channel to balance your chakras. But for, for me, with the tools that I have and that I use, I use crystals and I use the sprays in particular. I also use affirmation. I use natural light. I use nature. Um, I, but, you know, if, if you're wanting like a one stop all approach, you can use, for example, the white spray. Uh, white light coming down will cleanse and purify the chakras, particularly if you put Metatron's cube coming down at the same time. Or you can use the Rainbow Ray Upgrade and Expansion Spray. I'll put all these sprays below in the description box. But it definitely feels as though if you're in a heavy place, the need to maintain colour and light in your world, in your system is important before you get to that back to this place of balance. If you are conversely having a good time, you're having a happy time, there's lots of opportunities coming your way, you've still got the same cards. Um, perseverance and temperance. So how would that work for those two cards? Um, to include others, I'm feeling, to include others in your celebration. Um, the rainbow is made up of all of the different colours. So to include others in your celebration, um, to, to for, for your happiness to sort of filter down to other people. Um, so to be a model, basically, a role model of positivity for others that might not be feeling in that same vibration. Um, and equally, temperance here, which is also a healing card, is to do with happiness and joy and feeling, you know, wonderful thoughts and uh, having happy times is hugely healing for the body as well. Okay, so we've got that. Let's see what else we can get. So what are we... What... Okay, 
just trying to think what to ask it. What unexpectedly is coming in with this super moon? Because they talk about once in a blue moon, don't they? So what is unexpectedly coming in with this blue super moon? What is unexpectedly coming in with this blue super moon? We have the star and we've got the princess of swords, but it says curiosity. Um, it's going to stir curiosity within us. Um, I'm hearing curiosity killed the cat. Wasn't that an 80s band? I think they were quite good. Was he the guy that had the cat? Was it Ben? Ben from Curiosity Killed the Cat. Um, let me just see what song they sang. I mean, I know they sang lots of songs, but why am I picking them? Curiosity Killed the Cat Band. Uh, British pop band. Oh, Down to Earth. was That was a good song. Oh, they did a song called Misfit. <laughs> That's like the spiritual outsider. You're not a misfit. Um, an ordinary day. Yeah, I'm thinking of Down to Earth. Mm -hmm. Down to Earth. That was a good song. Okay, I might go away and listen to that after this. Uh, let's just see what the lyrics are, though. Down to Earth. Lyrics. Uh, shooting stars in midnight. I can't sing it, but anyway, yeah, it's all coming back to me, guys. It's all coming back to me. Shooting stars in midnight pastures and hanging out on clouds beneath the moon, hitching rides on magic carpets. It's a fairy tale to me, but you're in tune. You're shattered by the final frame of the movie scene that generates your every aim. You ain't no bird, and so far for what it's worth, going to bring you straight back down. In times when you're in need of assistance, you're looking for a lead, and in the distance you hear them calling, come back down again, but you don't know how. Um, right, there's something here about others trying to bring your dreams crashing down. We don't want that. We don't want your dreams to come crashing down to earth. Because here, here we've got the Princess of Swords. You're meant to be curious this uh, full moon. It's meant to make you feel a bit restless and like, what am I missing out on? And, uh, you know, what could I be doing? And even though you're not meant to change who you are, but there are opportunities out there. You are meant to be reaching for your dreams. We've got the star card. What is your dream? You're meant to be curious. You're meant to be exploring it. Don't let others, the naysayers, um, spoil that. Oh, you don't want to do that. You don't want to go there. Oh, no. I've heard, I've heard Venice is horrible, you know, and all of that. <laughs> you discover it for yourself. Look at that card on the bottom of the deck just looking at me. Discovery. You discover it for yourself. doesn't matter what anybody else's experience was. What is your experience? This moon is inviting us to be inquisitive and open. Okay. Final couple of cards. Final couple of cards. Final messages for the people watching, and then I'm going to close this out. Final messages for this super moon in, price, in Pisces. Did you know, I was reading today, and I'm realising that I probably was meant to be reading it, Pisces, Moon, Two Fish. I think it's said by 2050 there might be more plastic in terms of weight than fish in the ocean. We need to change that. And change starts with us, doesn't it? It's to do with all of the plastic that we consume, um, that we use, uh, that we flush down, you know, the toilet or... The uh, the bathtub, I'm talking about the little micro beads and things like exfoliator scrubs. Let's have compassion for Mother Earth and her waters, this super moon. The Queen of Wands, we have the energy of vibrancy. Vibrancy. Be vibrant. Show up. We have the energy of love. Nice. And we have the energy of success. There are some really 
positive energies that can come in on the back of this period. Embrace them. Go to the edge and jump. Take the jump of uh, take the leap of faith to reach for your goals, to aspire to be the best version that you can be. Be vibrant. Be successful. Have love in your heart. Want that for yourself. None of the old oh, buts. No, none of that. Let your higher self lead you towards this destination. Okay, going to leave it there. Going to get this video up. Take great care of yourselves. Lots of love. And I will be back next with Mr. Michael Jackson. <laughs> Looking forward to that as well. Okay, take care, guys. Bye-bye for now. Bye.